Uh, great to see everybody. Uh, obviously, we're really excited to be here, excited to extend our season for at least another week and uh, came over to Ruston last night. We, had, we practiced yesterday at our place and came over last night and just got off the field over at uh, Latex Ballpark today. And, uh, kids are in good spirits, are obviously excited and got some good work in and, uh, you know, going to be a tremendous challenge. Uh, Obviously, open up with North Carolina State and, and look at them on tape. They're they look like a, an SEC team. You know, they led the ACC in a lot of offensive categories. Just a really nice mix of uh, speed and power and left and right. And uh, we're going to have our, our hands full slowing them down. Do a good job too. Very active offense. They're, they're aggressive on the bases and they'll action uh, pretty aggressively. So uh, you know, we're not going to see anything that we haven't seen. But they're a, a really good club and a really strong offensive club and. Uh, will be a real challenge. So uh, excited to, to get going tomorrow. And uh, I would expect that uh, Rossi will give us a good start and our kids will, will play really well. And it should be a, a great college baseball game. Hey, Coach. Uh, Julian Blackwell here. Um, I got to talk on the phone with uh, Mitch Gaspard yesterday for about half an hour. And he said you guys have been in contact since Monday. What have those conversations been like? And uh, if you guys are able to play against each other, what's that going to be like for you two? Yeah, um, Mitch is a tremendous ambassador for our program. I hope all of our fans know that. He's a, just a great guy, a, a really good baseball coach, and he loves Alabama. Um, came out to practice today when he was the year that he coached at Georgia. He, he came out to practice. You know, he still got some relationships with Chandler Avan, and Kyle Cameron and Peyton Wilson and, uh, you know, some guys like that. And uh, was very, very helpful to me when I got the Alabama job of just navigating some things internally that uh, that you just don't know until you coach somewhere. So really thankful for Mitch's friendship and the way that he has supported us remotely. And, uh, you know, I know that he loves their club. And, you know, once the game start, that uh, he's going to give LaTeX everything that he has and, you know, to try to get to the World Series. But, um, you know, again, I can't say enough good things about Mitch. And, uh, you know, for we coaches, like once the game starts, it's just all about the kids in our dugout and the uniforms that we're wearing. And I don't want to speak for him, but I, I can't imagine that, you know, once the game start, even if we're playing, that uh, there'll be anything awkward or abnormal for, for anyone. A lot of us coaches are friends. You know, a lot of people don't realize that, that um, we spend a lot of time together in the offseason, you know, recruiting or, you know, going out to eat after watching baseball for 12 hours or, you know, those types of things. So, um Anyway, so it was, it was really nice to see him. He's a good man. Coach, you guys, in your uh, two wins in the SEC tournament, you jumped out to an early lead in the two losses. Uh, the other team took the lead first. So how important is it going to be to jump out quickly um, here tomorrow? I'm not great at math, James, but I would say it's pretty important. <laughs> Um, we have played from behind a lot more often than I'd like. And you know, about a month ago, I started joking before every game. I'm like, hey, guys, let's just make sure you guys know that it is OK to score first. I will not be mad at you. There's no extra sprints if we score first. Uh, the flip side of that is our kids, they do a good job. Even when we do get behind, they just go play and don't really play to the scoreboard. And we've had some great comeback wins. So, um, you know, there are a lot of statistics and all sports across all levels, but especially in college baseball where, you know, the team that scores first has a, a better than 50% chance of winning. So uh, we're certainly hopeful that we can throw the first punch tomorrow. Um, you know, the just hitting BP over at the park, it's an offensive ballpark, you know, it's, it's pretty short in the gaps, a little smaller than what we're used to. So uh, I don't think any lead is safe for either team. You know, if you get up two, you better get up four or five in, in a hurry. So um, that's always the plan. I wish I had, uh, you know, a, a magic pep talk or some magic dust to sprinkle on them to make sure that we did a better job of, of scoring first. But it absolutely is um, is important. And I'm very hopeful that we can throw that first punch tomorrow and, and every time that we play this weekend. Uh, Coach, in your intro, you kind of gave a little scouting report on NC State. Um, have you had time to kind of look over Law Tech and and Ryder? And if so, what's your what's your scouting report on those two teams in the regional? Well, I haven't spent as much time. I'm pretty good about just taking a day at a time. But you know, when you have potentially three new opponents in, in three days, you, you have to do some prep work. So uh, I tell what I tell you about Law Tech is they won 40 games, which is really hard to do, especially in a, a season where not everybody got 56 in. 
and they're just old as dirt, man. And I mean that in a good way. I mean, they got uh, three guys that are 60 year players. Okay. And we had some games in Hoover where seven of the nine guys on the field for us were either uh, true freshmen or COVID freshmen. Uh, so La Tech, they're just older and older kids manage the emotions of the game. They're more consistent. They, they're uh, typically just better at playing the game, you know, maybe not bigger, stronger, faster, but um, they just have a bunch of guy, older guys with a lot of maturity and toughness um, that play the game the right way and, and can really manage the, the mental and emotional part of the game. And, and uh, they're going to make you beat them. They are not going to make mistakes. We're going to have to make pitches and get big hits uh, to beat them if we do play them. Uh, and, and then, uh, you know, Ryder, they won their conference tournament. You know, they're hot. You know, you, you win your conference tournament, that means that you won three or four in a row and or four out of five. And, um, uh, you know, they've got some experience as well, certainly more, more than we do. So uh, anybody that's in a regional is a really good club and we've all got our strengths and weaknesses and, and, and whatnot. But, um, to beat any of these teams, we're going to need to to play our A game. You, you, you can't get to this point in the year and, and play your B or B minus game and ex expect to walk out with a win. And, um, you know, the percentages are really high that you need to win those first two games and certainly not going to give up if we get in the loser's bracket, but that's pretty taxing to, to win five games against these caliber of opponents in four days, which is what you would have to do to go through the loser's bracket. So I think it's essential for all of us to uh, to stay in that winner's bracket and, and we're going to do everything we can to, to win on Friday and then when we get to the park on Saturday we're going to do everything we can to, to win on Saturday. Hey Coach Bo, Talon Martin here. You know only only five runs in the last three games you know I know the I mean the composition you guys had your last 12 you guys faced nine of those games was against you know regional host um, so how much is it just you know going up against SEC pitching that, you know, maybe now getting out of that kind of gives you guys some confidence and say, hey, we're not scared to go up against anybody else. You know, NC State made it all the way to the ACC tournament final. But going up against SEC pitching, you know, weekend, weekend out, you know, how, how does that guys get, how does that give you guys confidence in terms of the offense and waking the bats up to not be scared against, you know, a, a team like Law Tech or NC State or Ryder? You know, that's a good question. And it's really kind of hard to answer. But I'll tell you a funny story. You know, we opened league play with Arkansas and, uh, you know, we won a game out there and lost a, a, a two-run game and, you know, had the tying run up to play. But, um, <laughs> you know, Kevin Copps, who's a national – it was SEC Pitcher of the Year and the National Pitcher of the Year um, All-American. You know, we got done with the weekend and we, we struck out a lot. And I'm just like, hey, guys, you're going to see that out of the pen every weekend, you know. <laughs> That's just an SEC closer. And obviously I, I undersold him a little bit, uh, a little light there. But – um, you know, th that's what I have to do just so I don't lose my mind. Um, you know, it's a balance. I mean, Kumar Rocker and uh, Blade Tidwell, the last guy we faced for Tennessee was up to 99 in the middle of the game. So, you know, those guys are hard to hit and there just aren't a lot of them in the country. Uh, NC State, their starters are, they have good stuff, but they're more like pitchability, you know, low 90s. Uh, move the ball around the strike zone with multiple pitches, very, very good, effective pitchers. Now they got a couple of guys in the pen with, you know, they're going to run it up to 94, 95. Uh, so those we will certainly see some stuff, but um, you know, that's what I tell the kids that the beauty of being in this league is you are not going to see anything that you haven't seen. And that doesn't mean that La Tech and Ryder and, and uh, NC State aren't going to run out some really good arms, but we've seen you know, mid to upper nineties and we've seen just some, absolute wipeout breaking balls. And, um, you know, you, you, as a coach, you try to find that middle ground of, yeah, I would like to string together some more at-bats. We need to get more hits. We need to score more runs. And you know what? Some of these pitchers we're facing are going to be pitching on TV in 18 months or 24 months. So uh, it, it's a happy medium. And, and, you know, you're certainly hopeful that if you get into this tournament and at some point you see some some arms that are a click down from that super high end SEC stuff that will have better at bats and make more solid contact. And um, certainly hope that's the way it plays out. This is, uh, and uh, go ahead. You had a follow up, Tyler? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, in two with that, I know getting Drew Williamson back, um, I know that's going to help your lineup out as well. What, what do you kind of expect from him this weekend? Well, the good thing about Drew in, in a few ways is, number one, he's actually got some experience. You know, he's played in, even though th these aren't SEC games, but it's, you know, same level of intensity and probably similar 
talent level and atmosphere. Um, Drew's actually got some experience and he was hitting over 300 in league play. So just gives us another left-handed bat. And he's a, just a really outstanding defender over there at first base. He's 6'4", 6'5". He's got that length and really good feed and gloves. Um, and just having, you know, a kind of a steadying presence in the lineup. So, you know, he took a couple of days off after playing in Hoover and swung the bat today. And, and I was, I'm very comfortable saying that he'll, he'll start tomorrow. And, um, you know, he looks good. I, it's really a, a real testament to him and our doctors and athletic training staff that he is where he's at and um, just kind of shows you the, the toughness that he has that, that he wants to play and, you know, is expecting to play. This is uh, Mike Rodak with AL.com. Just there was so much focus to this point on being on the bubble and whether or not you'd make it. Now that you're actually there in Ruston, just how much do you have to recalibrate your expectations and, and what you want to achieve out of this postseason now that you're in it and you're there? And that hasn't, um, that really hasn't been an issue. You know, our, our kids are, I say this a lot, it, Joey and some of these guys are going to roll their eyes at me, but. Um, this group is as good as any group that I've ever had. I mean, they're kind of the same every day. And, um, you know, as coaches in the sport of baseball, you talk to your kids so much about um, not riding the roller coaster, you know, like things are never as good as or as bad as they seem. And like this group has a really short memory, which is really good in baseball. And there have been times in the season where they've probably handled some adversity or short-term failure as a group better than I have, to be perfectly honest. And I'm, I'm a pretty, I mean, shoot, I've been in the league 18 years, you know, I've had a lot of, a lot of ups and downs and, um, you know, that's a real strength of this group. So we found out we got in and the kids were happy and you know, we went out and practice and it was just like most every other practice the last three months. So, um, you know, it doesn't mean that we're going to play well or that we're going to win, but I, I'll be shocked if we don't come out and, and, really get after it and, and, and play well. And hopefully it'll be enough to win. But um, I feel very, very comfortable with the, the feeling of the, the bus and the dugout and, uh, you know, how the group, um, the temperament of the group, I'm very comfortable going into tomorrow with that. Yeah, Coach, uh, this NC State team, uh, they only committed, I believe, uh, 28 errors throughout the regular season. Um, and they, they don't walk many batters. So how important is it going to be to value hits and be able to move runners over in key situations in this game? Yeah, that, that's a good point, James. They're, they're a good defensive team. They're athletic, and they don't give you a lot. Um, you know, they, they weren't playing midway games, so they kind of just used five pitchers, and those, those three starters have done a good job of pitching in the middle, deeper in the game. And, and then, you know, they've got those two lefties with, with some stuff on the back end, in the middle and the back end, that have been successful for them. And, and very consistent. So, I mean, you nailed it. If they don't walk you or hit you and, and they play good defense, you, you got to go out and earn it. They, they, you got to string some hits together. And um, that's what we're going to have to do. And we haven't done that consistently. Um, and certainly hopeful that, uh, you know, that if we hit a home run tomorrow, we can do it with two people on base instead of a solo home run and, you know, th those types of things. Anything else, guys? Everybody good? All right. Thank you all. Enjoy your day.